So this was a big day for me and Sherry. We're picking up our new 2013 3625 Montana fifth wheel and trading it in um, uh, from our 29 foot comfort trailer. And it was pretty overwhelming. So we uh, showed up at Camping World in Burlington, Washington. There's somebody in it. That's Ken. Hey, Ken. We came to you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Bob and Sherry. This Hi. is Ken. Hi there, pleasure. Nice to meet you. Sherry. Hi. But turned out that, you know, uh, there's a lot of things to do. You have your walkthrough, which was very intensive. And we'll show you a couple of excerpts of that. Your tanks are right here as mm -hmm. well as your battery condition. And as you might imagine, we're plugged in right now. So as you can see, the corresponding battery, it says yep. C, G, F, L. C is for charging. And because we're plugged in, that in fact is happening. Same thing when you're traveling down the road. Uh, it will be charging from your vehicle. Okay black tank which is over here and we want to see all ease because uh, it's winterized and we go to fresh empty black empty gray one empty and gray two you do have two separate tanks as you might imagine you may have had it on other mm -hmm. coach it's one for the galley and one for the bathroom okay tv of course is right here Jensen, again, we've got air TV. We're not getting anything special. We're not plugged in, it's, you know. So this is anything, and you, again, depending on where you're at, typically you'll be able to pick up anywhere between three to four stations. And uh, this, very simply, do not take it off the rubber bands or anything. Just soak the whole thing. Okay. Yep, a little bit of the Dawn disc soap. Mm -hmm. Give it a clean rinse. Let it air dry, and put it back. But I want to give you the overview. And give you the Reader's Digest condensed version. Okay, first off, you can see right now that the face plate is not lit up. If you go and push this button, all that does, if you push it one time, it wakes it up. It tells you, it tells the unit that you want to do something. The plumbing has got pink fluid, and as you saw when I flushed the toilet, okay, the low point drains, in which we're going to show you when I get outside. Um, they are designed to take a good portion of all that pink out. Um, the other way to get it out of there, of course, how do we get the pink stuff in the lines originally? Exactly. And we use the water pump. So what happens is you need to run fresh water in your fresh water fill and, uh, and essentially allow the drains to drain and then open up all your faucets. Right. Turn your water pump on, and, and it's going to pump and pump and pump until you get nothing but clear water coming through. And you can leave your valve open so you don't have to be hooked up with sewer hoses and all that stuff. It's just, you can't hurt animals and you won't kill plants. It's not like automotive antifreeze. Right. Um, are you familiar with these? No. These rods are designed, they're an aftermarket product, and they're designed to take impurities out of a different. Uh, oh, places you might, yeah. So it will pick up all kinds of things and stuff that would normally deposit and try to eat away at the interior of the tank. Uh -huh. It'll eat on this instead. The other coach just has a waterworks station, is what we call it. And there's where your black and your other gray paint panel is. So you've got that one back there, and you've got these two right here. Okay. Now your other low point drains that I told you about. You don't have to get on a creepy crawler to get to them, they're right here. Okay. Blue is your cold, red is your hot lines, okay? And that's the low tank lines for the whole system? Yeah, low point drains. And I'll open one up here and I'll show What's you. What's the purpose of the one in the back then? See the pink? Yep. That, that's the tank. That, that's your fresh water holding tank drain. Okay. And this one for the main system of all the plumbing. Right, and you can see right here, pink stuff. Mm -hmm. So, as I mentioned to you before, you're going to open those up, you're going to open that one up underneath, right, and you're going to pour fresh water into it, turn on the water mm -hmm. pump, mm -hmm. and you're going to open up your shower, mm -hmm. you're going to open up your sinks, and you're going to wait till you see clear water. 
and then you're going to stop come in here close all the valves off plug up the hot water tank close off the <coughs> bottom one you're good to go propane okay and of course you have the other one on the other side they're opposing sides you can see a lot of hydraulic lines which again is going to operate that system and we'll get into that in a minute um, the valve changeover is right there okay and when it's in the opposite direction like right now it's pointing directly here this tank is currently closed off okay and I've been using the other tank for keeping the coach warm so when they start to turn red it's kind of like the fuel light in your car it doesn't mean you're out it means you better get to a gas station so the leveling system in here uh, it says everything on on the front here and uh, it's pretty simple and easy to operate don't let it get confusing there really isn't any way short of really um, coming in here and just playing it like a piano <laughs> that you could drop everything and nose the thing in the ground you really can't do that I mean if you really tried you might yeah. but just by now, push do you use the same unit just to do the lift yeah the front end too yeah. for example we can just turn it on right now right it says <coughs> ready jacks are down right now it's, it's just talking about these jacks yeah well the other ones aren't down but uh, is this part of that system too yeah okay well i wanted to show you this because it is rather important that you see it happening yeah, yeah. because i mean you know this is part and parcel to what makes this coat so cool the leveling system is designed like motorhome yeah nice okay. so when i come in here it's showing uh that the coach is leaning to the right and we are because of the slope of the pavement okay so basically when you come down to it we're just going to hit and you got to watch your head now and if you're underneath like i am right now not a good idea because it it could level up here first it could i don't know yeah, it yeah. depends it has its own computer system and before i get into that i want to yeah. share with you what these mean bedroom slide <coughs> drivers but that's for down here yeah. and then the other driver's side which would be the other right. slide the auxiliary is going to be your kitchen slide okay? okay if you get into a place where you can't get a particular slide out because i mean you yeah. love i was wondering cancel. if i could do one slide i mean yeah you can isolate it and then of course over here the elusive generator yep and 5500 lp um the lps are very quiet and as you can imagine uh there is a as i mentioned there is maintenance to be done you're only at 27 hours guys right now frankly the average schedule for uh, a generator out of the box is right around 30 so you're just coming approaching that time to have a service you know a couple hours away from that so, so yes it is a good unit and it will operate the entire coach 5501 your kingpin is not unlike your, your power cord is not unlike what you have in the trailer. Um, the other thing is you have a more ride system. If you ever get a chance to go online, look this up, you'll be impressed. The way the coach toes will be so significantly smoother and even though it's heavier uh -huh. and even though it's bigger, it's going to tow very, very oh, soon. Mm. Yeah, you got the nail on it. Yeah. <laughs> it's got these shock absorbers and this neoprene yeah. plastic, and there's a the big rubber. You can see it right here. Wow. You don't get near as much chucking. Have you heard that term before? Yeah. Pin chuck, where it sounds like metal on metal, bang, bang, bang. Yeah. You don't get that nearly as much as you do with a with a system without this. And the slope and the design of the front capture is so much more cleaner and efficient than it is with some of the others that are out here. So
I have a question about the levelers. Is it a good idea to put wood blocks in them? I wouldn't use wood, and I'll tell you why. Wood is heavy, wood gets slimy. Um, if anything, I'd use a nylon or a neoprene plastic. Uh, yeah, a little square thing. Yep, about yay big, but yay big. What it does is it increases the footprint yeah. size. If you're in sand or mud, they're, they're absolutely necessary. And part of the reason is is that you're not going to bring up, you don't want the, all that grease, I mean that sand and mud, yeah. around the foot, right? Right. And because if it gets around the foot and then it goes up, when next time it comes back down, guess what? It's all over the landing leg. Another thing about that silicone, spray those I know this turned down. out to be a little bit of uh, longer tape than I'd like it to be, but um, there's a lot of information to learn from and there was so much material. Once again, we'll um, have more uh, information for you in the future, and thank you for watching, and I hope you got some education from this.